Hello and welcome to Moi Channel. Here we are today, Wei Chen, Dima, nice to see you. Maybe you've seen this before, maybe not. But today we're going to tell you about one of the most interesting tea sorts, the aged Sheng Buer. And some even call him, well, me, the Bitcoin of tea. And Wei Chen and me are going to tell you all about it. So Wei Chen, could you introduce the tea that we're going to be drinking today? We here have a few uh, bitcoins of uh, tea, of course. Uh, so you can see a bitcoin peacock and a bitcoin <laughs> bull. Tea coin, yes. <laughs> tea coin, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and me here holding on my hand is a tea which is even older than me, uh, Chung Cha, uh, aged Xiong Pur. It's a fun fact is that uh, it's from 2001 and... It's actually my birth year, so this is, this is literally the, the, the year I was born. Yeah, it's cool, yeah. That's quite incredible. And mm -hmm. I have a, a couple of questions already. Um, why are there like animals on the tea cakes? Is that just because uh, for fun or do they have any special meaning? Oh, actually, let me check. They might not might be the year of the animal. Because I know the bull probably is 2001, right? Or that's also part of the Chinese calendar or not? Yeah, that is a part of Chinese calendar, but I'm not <laughs> exactly sure hmm. if that's the correct year or not. It right. should be, yeah, it should be. Maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe they just <laughs> pranked us by putting a bull there. <laughs> About bulls, we also have a very nice tea table here with a teapot, which, uh, well, is a swine, you could call it, right? Mm -hmm. Or a warthog, right? Mm -hmm. It has like this little uh, big teeth mm -hmm. and uh, it stands for courage and uh, bravery. Yeah, if I'm and a lot of energy. Yes, exactly. A lot of energy and mm -hmm. we all need that in these times, you know, mm -hmm. Corona and, and stuff, but we'll get through it together. Mm -hmm. We're going to drink this tea. We're going to talk about these teas mm -hmm. and Wei Chen is also going to give you an insider perspective on Sheng Puers, you know, because it's, it's a completely different beast. Um, I was just super intrigued by your stories about it. So <laughs> thank you. Let's uh, start with the infusion. Cool. Which tea should we choose today? Well, I think it would be incredible to do the 2001 one because of it's course. also, if you don't know anything about these, this is one of the most, uh, well, exquisite we have in our collection. It's literally history, yeah? Yeah, exactly. You're drinking history, you know? Mm -hmm. um, it has uh, a very delicate uh, but interesting smell so, uh, and, and taste, actually, more, more often the taste. Um, because people often ask, like, what does aging does do to tea? And for me, I would describe it as it makes the taste deeper and more interesting, as if it has more dimension, right? Mm -hmm. More like taste tracks running uh, through each other, uh, through each other or parallel to each other. So with Sheng, you often see that it has a very peri or um, fresh taste when it's fresh. But when you age it, 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 it gains some depth, right, Wei Chen? Mm -hmm. And it makes it small, smoother, less those, uh, you know, those fresh tea, we, what we call the Sheng Cha, mm -hmm. have its like walked flavor and it's not a very pleasant bitterness to it. And after the aging time, it's just like a good cup of wine as well. It will be way smoother as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for us Westerners, you can compare it to just like whiskey aging or wine aging. Um, right. For many people, that is something which is completely unknown. Like you can age tea, but that's not all. Why I compare this to Bitcoin? If you age this tea, which is from 2001, mm -hmm. when it starts out, it's not that expensive at all. So it's like it's actually a worthless. It's <laughs> actually just probably a few, uh, maybe just 10, 20 euro for this whole cake. For this whole cake, exactly, right? Exactly. Yeah. But now, after around 19 years of aging, uh, it has gained a lot of value. Well, mm -hmm. this one is 800 euros, right? Yeah. Um, but imagine, like, for example, when if 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 you would have gotten it while I was born, you were and just by letting it sit you would already have a, well, 20% return or 20, two, 20 times return on your investment. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. <laughs> Almost like with Bitcoin. No cap though. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> exactly. And it's not even uh, something that nobody does. In China, it is pretty often done, right? Yeah, it's pretty often done. Even people, uh, some tea nerds, they even build their own uh, uh, places to store their own. Like wine pages. cellars, yeah. but for tea, right? Yeah. <laughs> Super cool. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, oh, I think we forgot one imp very important thing to break this tea cake exactly, apart. Yeah. Let me also show you guys what this looks like. Because it's uh, many for many of you, probably it's the first time you see a tea cake. Could you maybe tell a bit more about how this is made and why this is pressed like this? Sure. Uh, well, pressed tea, for my understanding and my discussion with my tea friend, is basically easier for transportation. 
And as you know, Yunnan is uh, bordered with a lot of countries as well, so it's easier for trading with other countries as well. And some fun fact about those kind of teas, uh, this is a very traditional tea, as I probably said here, a qi zi bing. That means seven cakes of tong, and each cake is 357 grams. And that's a very strange number, actually. Yeah. In the, well, what, there have two meanings behind this number, actually. One meaning I heard when, uh, my, uh, during my visit to Yunnan is that uh, 357 is like a lucky number uh, in Yunnan. It represents 多子多福, it represents a big family, happy <laughs> family. You know, it represents happiness and uh, fulfill. And also, if you times 357 by uh, 7, which is 7 cakes per tong, uh, that's actually 2.499 kilogram so that's approximately 2.5 kilogram and that's also easier for transportation so to have like a double meaning to it is mm -hmm. not only lucky but also like easier to transport easier to uh, trade easier, easier to pass the custom and yeah. all of these rules haven't been thought of like recently right it's, it yeah. stems from a long time ago exactly also. yeah so this is the continuation of ancient traditions or ancient trade traditions mm -hmm. even which is amazing because tea carries a lot of culture and a lot of meaning behind it but uh, to uh, to actually start to infusing this oh i see that we already have like a uh, bricks great i thought we would have to uh, have to get a special uh, puer knife mm -hmm. because those also exist they're great to break it apart mm -hmm. fun fact also if you want to infuse this tea you do want to do it well you never break it just like that you actually well sometimes you do mm -hmm. but uh, most often especially if it's a good tea you use a little pick basically to grab the cake and delayer it right so you start entering like this exactly that's what i just uh, did and i didn't show you oh <laughs> which I already that's what i did actually is to grab some of the inside uh, i just grabbed some inside and actually also grab some outside as well so what i personally do when i uh, enjoy my aged cake i usually break the whole cake mm -hmm. and make like blend it by myself because you can, uh, as you know, as you already saw, Dima already showed you that the cake was pressed and the fermentation and the aging process of outside and inside was slightly different. And these differences will be noticed even like more dramatically if uh, a such long aged cake such as this one is li literally more than 20 years of aging. And that you can actually taste the difference between the outside of the cake and inside of the cake. That's why I al always grab a little bit of outside wow. with a little bit of inside to make the taste balance, to taste the whole cake basically in one cup of tea. But that's so cool. I actually mm -hmm. always thought about like cakes being aged the same outside and inside, but it's amazing that it also differs. Mm -hmm. And actually, I think it almost can be compared to whiskey, right? So basically some whiskeys have a smokier and a bit more sharp right. uh, flavor and some mm -hmm. uh, whiskeys are more mellow, bourbon and scotch. Mm -hmm. And do you have that same effect in uh, this type of fermentation as well? Exactly, not? exactly. I believe so. And it depends on different uh, companies. More important, it depends on where they collect their material from. As in Yunnan, there are many, 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 I'm not even going to name it. I'm not even going to try to name it. A lot of yeah. little, uh, we call it mountains, but it's not a giant mountain. It's more like uh, mountain hills that they grow uh, poor. And they, for example, they have Monghai mountains, Bingdao man mountains, Banjang mountains. That was a, one of the very famous ones. And what I know, which is also the most popular one, the Bingdao, which is more on the sweet side, and the banjong is more on the smoky and bitterness side. Mm -hmm. So that's already uh, a difference. Like a Highlands <laughs> whiskey is always more smoky uh -huh. and uh, you know, a traditional Scott is more like uh, rounded and sweet. Wow, yeah. cool that you can draw parallels mm -hmm. through them, right? Okay, so shall we find out if this is more on the smoky or <laughs> the mellow spectrum? Of course. Great. Do you have any infusion tips, by the way? Because I know for many people, Sheng Pu'er is almost like a mystery. Like, for example, green tea, you know how to infuse, 70 mm -hmm. degrees. Red tea and oolong, also 100 degrees. But sometimes people infuse Sheng and they're like, oh my God, uh, it tastes so weird. Did I do something wrong? Can you do, give some insights or tips? Well, first, we're gonna get the good Sheng Pu'er, especially the Sheng Pu'er from Mochi. <laughs> and course. also uh, the temperature, I believe around uh, 85 to 90 degrees is fine for the first few infusion and if you want to gradually uh, gradually increase the temperature during infusions that will be fine so instead of gradually decreasing it you will be actually gradually increasing it to get more flavor out of the tea actually right? that's what i will do cool mm -hmm. all right 
and is that also like a tradition that was passed down to you by your parents or your grandparents or did you experiment actually that's i experiment myself because my grand my, my parents and my grandparents are not a very big uh, poor drinker mm -hmm. yeah i think you told they like green tea more right yeah they're more a green tea person green tea people <laughs> got you <laughs> right and also by the way uh we leave one cup empty mm -hmm. for any unexpected guests which may arise right sure, during yeah. the tea ceremony <laughs> And after this little tea tasting break, because you know, we can't just like talk over it, we're back. So, wait, Chad, could you introduce us to your thoughts about this tea? Because mm -hmm. I always keep smelling the cup, even the cup is getting cold now. It still have a, for me, a dry plum flavor to it, like dry a plum. dry plum uh, smell on note. And that's something very interesting because that's only the smell you're gonna get from a fresher pour. And uh, well, if this pour is aged for 20 years and still smells very fruity, that's, that really means something about this pour. Yeah. That's so cool, yeah. You may be asking, by the way, like, why, why did you guys smell it for so long? Uh, we really had to cut a part out because, um, especially with these teas, you really want to get deep into that smell, deep into that experience. Uh, if you're watching for the first time, a tea ceremony is like that, you know, it's an experience. So it's not just like with, I don't know, any cheap beer or wine that you just, you know, you really try to enjoy it. Or you may not choose to, it's completely up to you, but that's how we drink our tea. Thank you. And for me, it was a very interesting mix again of that smokiness, actually, and the freshness Wei Chan talked about. Mm -hmm. um, some people compare this to grape juice, for example, or like fresher pu'ers, right? Mm -hmm. um, but I really felt some smokiness, some trees, basically, uh, and uh, a very deep flavor, as I said. So for me, it mixed different types of flavors as well. So I would like to return to the fact that this is an exquisite type of tea and whenever you're paying for something like this, um, you also want to enjoy it from small cups to enhance your smell and aroma. You see Wei Chen smelling from the Gung no Bay. Mm -hmm. That is also a different type of smell because we're dealing with different types of smell as well. Um, and there's different and very own ways of trying to or, and enjoying the smells and tastes of the tea. And I also would like to share a small tip that I learned from my tea friend as well. As they always say that the aged shun pour is not expensive because the pour itself uh, sometimes is more, even more expensive of the storage it was kept in. Uh, it's really easy to ruin the storage and just ruin a few tons of tea. That's also why uh, shun pour is also very executive because the really good dry uh, Mm -hmm. Storage is very rare as well, all over the world. And uh, a small tip after checking the, uh, the storage is actually smelling from a judge cup, a Gung Dao Bei. And th it's the smell from it's still warm to it's cold. If you have any hint of uh, moldy smell, that means it's not a really good uh, storage or it's a uh, so it, it, wet it, it, storage basically got you so mm -hmm. somebody didn't keep it perfectly the same exactly. for the 19 or they want to speed up the aging process by adding more humidity inside that's actually also happened what happened in china i believe in thailand as well they build like those storage and they actually make those storage more hotter and more uh, more humidity actually make it like a little sauna for the uh -huh. for the cakes uh, for for the for the pores and that actually will speed up the process of its aging but as you know, you're just gonna let the times to do your job. Those cakes who have those fake aging will be less enjoyable than this one the for really sure. Really. Yeah. Well, yeah, I can imagine there's a lot of different ways to optimize and try to like fake it, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a really cool tip. And that's also 
why we would always suggest to at least try and try your tea before you really invest in a tea cake uh, well, like this or of course not many people are gonna buy this right but imagine you're buying a tea cake that costs 60 euros that's already like a big commitment because you can well with the 357 grams that you'll get you yes. can drink a long time and the price also might rocket <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly it's, again it's very volatile right yeah if you choose the good material <laughs> yes so you have to do your due diligence analysts right if you need a couple of analysts we can suggest you some you can always ask uh, mm -hmm. ask us uh, to help you out with this choice as well we love to do that we're not just a shop we really want to educate you guys about uh, how you can make a good choice yourself as well. And uh, last thing maybe that's really worth talking about, if we don't get on any other side, uh, side tracks, is the price of Pu'er, why it's so expensive. So Wei Chen mentioned the storage, of course, uh, but you also gotta have good, uh, well, origin material. There's, for example, a province in China, which is called uh, Yongde, um, and that is, that houses, it's pretty small, so it houses a lot of rare and exclusive material so then the price already is going to be higher but often those habitats have exquisite smells and tastes in ingrained in them already right mm -hmm. and furthermore um yeah just don't trust if if you have a high price but there's not a lot of information that is just something that cannot really happen so if you ask a store like okay <laughs> why mm -hmm. and they're like just good <laughs> that, that's not how it works as well right so keep uh, keep your eyes out mm -hmm. for that and also don't trust if there's like cake it says from 2009 or, or it says say it's from Bingdao, but it's only 20 euro per cake <laughs> but you also be smart on that right? yes exactly and last little tip an insider tip inside information from people that have traveled all over china when you come into a tea shop in china uh, this is not necessarily related to Buer though but if you come into a tea shop in china you will never find any coffee anywhere or any like sure. aromatized teas. Mm -hmm. Why? It's because, uh, for example, also, of course, this tea is so delicate that if you put something very strong, very aromatic besides it, even if it's in a different section, it's literally gonna take that smell exactly, yeah. and gonna degrade. Mm -hmm. So if you're in a high-end tea store, except if it's aromatic, but if you're in a high-end tea store uh, and they have coffee as well, run, and run <laughs> fast. So I think that's a good suggestion. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it for me. And if you want to see our aged teas, not only Pu'er's, we have more, you can always do that on our site. If you would like to see more of our amazing Wei Chen and sometimes <laughs> me, then you can also check out our Instagram. Uh, and of course, please subscribe to our YouTube because then it will motivate us to give you many more bits of beautiful content. With that being said, Thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>